his calling. Okay, calling the meeting to oh, okay. order. <laughs> Morning cards. So Kathy. So we are uh, convening into closed session. Oh, roll call. Go for it. Ms. Floor. Here. Ms. Yelsey. Here. Ms. Black. I'm here. Ms. Barto. I hear. Ms. Anderson. Here. Ms. Snell. Here. Ms. Matoye. Here. Dr. Navarro. Here. <laughs> Mrs. Fleur, it's very difficult to hear you. Sorry. Thank you. All right. We're going in. We're convening into closed session. Thank you. Yes, everybody getting. Well, no, uh, international uh, readout statement before closed session. We're going to be discussing the International School of Science and Culture Proposition 39 request. Okay. Good evening, everyone. We'd like to get started. I know there's a lot of people who would like to be in the room. We just have to keep the aisles cleared. So um, if we're recognizing some people and although we'd love to have everybody stay at our meeting when that's over you're welcome to leave um, so <laughs> thank you uh, before we get started i have a readout from closed session oh by the way um president floor could not be here because of a medical reason so i'll be running the meeting tonight um, in closed session the following motion was made the motion is made and seconded that the Board of Education approve the request to expunge case 171777 consistent with Education Code 48918E. It was moved by Mrs. Black, seconded by Mrs. Matoye. The roll call vote was seven ayes, zero noes. Okay, welcome everyone. And now we will have a moment of reflection and pledge of allegiance led by Kenya Roca from Estancia High School. Please rise. Ready to begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adoption of the agenda. Do have a motion? Move adoption. Second. Next. I'll second. Oh, Who's oh. second? I wanted to make a comment before. Yes. Um, I would like to close this meeting, if possible, in honor of Carmen Mora, the community school facilitator at Pomona, who passed away recently. Okay. And I would like to add to that Nancy Lester, a longtime teacher in the district from Newport L, and Ardeth Benzmiller a special ed aide that I know has worked at Newport L for over 30 years. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, adoption of the minutes from 12 10 19. Move adoption. Second. I'll second. Edited. Was moved by Mrs. Black, seconded by Mrs. Bartow. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, introduction. Okay, I just have to go back one other thing. We had closed session at 3.30 where we had a readout, but it wasn't recorded, so I need to record it now. Sherry, um, not corrected. It's okay, go ahead. In closed session, we went into closed session to discuss International School for Science and Culture Proposition 39 request. Okay, back to our agenda. <laughs> Introduction of new staff, and I'm going to turn that over to Mr. Drake. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, it's absolutely an honor this evening to be able to introduce to you uh, a new team member who will be an assistant principal for us at, uh, or has actually already started as an assistant principal at Mariners and Newport Heights Elementary School, and that's Dr. Anthony Mercado. Um, and before Dr. Mercado comes on up to the podium, um, I'd like to just give you a little background. Dr. Mercado uh, has worked in public education for 14 years um, prior to coming to Newport Mesa, most recently in, a, in special ed programs um, as a special education administrator in Downey Unified. 
Um, also prior to Downey Unified, uh, Dr. Mercado was a school psychologist on special assignment for Norwalk La Mirada Unified School District where he developed and coordinated the district-wide achieving success through positive intervention and resiliency education programs. He brings to us a wealth of knowledge and experience around multi-tiered systems of support as well as uh, supporting the academic needs of students. So I'd like to welcome Dr. Anthony Mercado to our team. Good evening. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Board Vice President Yelsey, uh, members of the board, uh, Superintendent Navarro, um, ex uh, Executive Cabinet, and esteemed guests. <clears throat> I'm a little under the weather right now, so oh, excuse no. my voice. <laughs> First week, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm grateful for the privilege to serve students and their families within the Newport Mesa Unified School District as assistant principal. As an educational leader at Newport Heights and Mariners Elementary, I'm committed to the NMUSD's mission of facilitating experiences for students to acquire the knowledge, skills, and attitudes necessary to achieve significant career, educational, civic, and personal goals, which will enrich the society and community. Um, I thank you for this exciting opportunity, and I look forward to the fu my future at NMUSD. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And do you, Mr. Mercado, do you have any family members you'd like to introduce? You know what? Unfortunately, they have the same issue I'm having right now. And so uh, we have a trifecta at home. So my wife, my beautiful wife and my two young children, uh, Camden and me, are unable to come today. But um, they are very excited for me to uh, be here at Newport Mesa Unified because it is closer to home. And family is a, a, a big thing for me. And I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to, to work at such a great district. So thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, now on to item 11, and I cannot tell you how excited we all are to have these recognitions tonight. I think we've been looking forward to this for over a month now, at least with CIF championships that went even farther. Um, so I will turn that over to Dr. Baumeister. Thank you. Uh, Newport Mesa Unified School District athletes competed in the CIF Southern Section, one of the largest and most competitive high school interscholastic sections in the country. Three times a year we recognize our teams and individuals who have won CIF Southern Section Championships. And tonight we're recognizing our fall athletes. We begin tonight with the Colonel Mar boys football team. Not only did they win a CIF Southern Section Championship in Division Three, but they were also Division 1A Southern Regional Champions and State Division 1A Champions. Yeah. Having watched high school football in this county for over 50 years, it's my opinion that this year's Colonel Mar varsity football team is as good as any high school football team that I've seen in the last 50 years. Wow. And with that, I will call up Colonel Mar High School principal, Kathy Scott. Good evening, President, Vice President Yelsey, members of the board, our cabinet, and all of our guests. We have a lot of CDM families, but we have other schools here as well. Paul Arino, congratulations. And so, um, yes, we had an unbelievable football season this year. We ended with an undefeated overall record of 15, a 16 and zero, we're very proud of. After a very challenging pre-league schedule, we entered our league with a five wins, no losses, and we continued to play strong and undefeated, winning our Sunset League with quality competition from Edison, Los Alamitos, in Newport Harbor. Then we won another four straight games to earn the Division III championship against a private school, Grace, Grace Brethren, with a 56-28 win. The following week, we beat Oceanside High School for a Southern California Regional Championship, and that earned us the opportunity to play in the state championship game the following week. Then on Saturday, December 14th, we beat J. Sarah High School from San Mateo to win the state championship. Our tremendous season earned our football team many accolades, including both state and national rankings. Additionally, our team represented our school at the highest level of sportsmanship throughout all season. We are very proud of the efforts of our players, our coaches, and their families in making such a memorable year for our school. So at this time, I'd like to bring up our co-head coaches, Dan O'Shea, who will be introducing the select members of the team, and Kevin Hedick, who's going to help me corral them up here so we can shake hands. <laughs> Uh, first of all, to the Newport Mesa 
uh, board. It is our distinct pleasure to be here tonight. It is quite an honor. We appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to honor us, honor us here tonight. Uh, Dr. Navarro, thank you very much for all your support to high school athletics throughout the school district. Uh, I know a time-consuming uh, part of your job, to say the least, and we appreciate all of your efforts. Uh, Dr. Bauermeister, I cannot thank you enough. In the midst of our field management issues this year, uh, when I picked up a phone or sent you a text, you were incredibly responsive and somehow allowed us to get through what we thought would be a difficult situation, end up being about as seamless as you possibly could without a football facility this year. And uh, I, without a doubt in my mind, uh, to the greatest principal that anyone could work for as a teacher and certainly as a coach, uh, having worked in both the private sector and in the public sector as as a teacher, I've never worked under a better administrator in any business or any school uh, facility, and really, really appreciate the support you give us, Ms. Scott. Um, we were uh, very blessed, to say the least. Um, the first thing to present yourself as a C potential CIF championship, you have to be blessed with some special kids. But before we we ever talk about any talent or what our goals are from a wins and loss standpoint, which is not a priority in our football program. It starts with the character of the team because the character of the team creates the culture of the football program. And these gentlemen who you'll see here tonight are the leaders of this football program. But what we are most proud about them is not their football ability. It's their decision making socially as individuals on our campus, how they respond as academic leaders on our campus, and how they present themselves as future young men in this community. And that's our goal as teachers slash coaches. And they embody what we want the Corona Del Mar football experience to be better than anyone who has ever come before it. And they just happen to be the most talented football team <laughs> that the school has ever seen, I would imagine. And it was our distinct pleasure to uh, be able to coach such fine young men and represent our school as a whole. If I could call them up, these would be our leaders of our uh, football program. And uh, I would not be here speaking before you without the unbelievable dedication and support. And we truly manage this team together, uh, co associate coach and co-head coach Kevin Hedig and our offensive coordinator. So all the accolades that our team receives and all the unbelievable records that were set, he should get all the credit for that to say the least. And without further ado, I'd like to call up the players who perform for us. Uh, senior Riley Binquist, junior Thomas Buda, junior Connor Brooks, sophomore Cole Clemmer, I may be calling. Senior Carter Duss. Senior Max Farzin. Senior Ethan Garbers. Uh, junior Tommy Griffin. Junior Ryder Hopped. Senior John Humphreys. Sophomore Charlie Mannon. Junior Brock Preston. Senior Vinny Provenza, Senior Cole Renner, Senior Jack Rotler, Junior Hunter Shim, Senior Bradley Schlom, Senior Tanner Tomlinson, Junior Jason Vicencio, and Senior Chase Zank. I, was, I kept looking back to make sure nobody came in late. I think that accounts for um, what we consider some of the very best leaders on our football team, but more importantly, what we consider some of the very best leaders on the academic and student campus at Corona Del Mar. And I'd love to give them a round of applause as well. anything you know a half of them you guys know how Can to I just say something too I mean with, <laughs> we are all so proud of all of you and the rest of your team and what you express not only are these guys great athletes but they're also men of character and great citizens and that means so much to our board and I know I've talked to many parents not only parents who are here but some of the parents who have 
of uh, football kids who are not here and have expressed how wonderful this program has been if you're a senior over the last four years. But it's to the dedication of Coach O'Shea and all your assistants that this has happened because everyone feels like a family there. It feels, Corona Del Mar has been so supportive and they feel just so blessed to have all of you. So congratulations, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Our next CIF Southern Section champions are the Colonel Mar girls tennis team, who are the Division I, which is the highest division in CIF, CIF champions. And again, Principal Kathy Scott. So we were very excited. Our, ten, our girls' tennis team sort of started our winning season, so we're very proud of them. And uh, again, thank you for tonight for taking time to honor our varsity sports fall season. Um, our girls' tennis team finished this past season with an overall record of 18 wins, five losses, uh, finishing their Sunset League season undefeated uh, with six wins, winning the league championship. They had a, kind of a rough start with three wins and five losses, and then the girls got together, rallied, and won the next 15 matches. So that qualified them for CIA have playoff wins over some very tough tennis programs in both private and public schools, and that garnered them the CIF Southern Section Division I champions. And additionally, they represent our school with such class and dignity and all that they did both on and off the court, and we're very proud of all their hard work. And at this time, I'd like to bring up our head coach, Jamie Gresh, so he can introduce each of the girls on this winning team. Uh, thank you, Kathy, and thank the Newport Mesa Unified School District for honoring us tonight. Uh, each girl, uh, Katie Barnes. <laughs> Ella Jacobs. <laughs> Hannah Jervis. <laughs> Lauren Jones. <laughs> Reese Kennerson. Anya Kennelly. <laughs> Irasima Laredo. <laughs> Kate Montgomery. <laughs> Alden Mulroy. Jane Paulson. <laughs> Olivia Sipiora. <laughs> Sydney Sperlin. <laughs> Ashley Thomas. Tori Varela. <laughs> Christina Veskovich. <laughs> and 
Kate Wood. Same thing, if I could just have you in three rows, maybe two, but just really tight. Once again, as she's setting up for the picture, Thank you all so much. I actually have some personal knowledge of how tough it is to win a Tempest tennis championship because I have a daughter who played at Corona Del Mar years ago. And Southern California is a haven for tennis. And so it's always super competitive and you guys deserve this and did an awesome job. So thanks so much, congratulations. First row, if you could just squat for me. Corona Del Mar scored today, but we have even one more celebration. So Dr. Baumeister. Over the years, we've recognized a number of teams, but tonight we're also here to recognize an individual CIF champion. The CIF Southern Section Individual Champion for Girls Golf. Now think about that for a minute. The number one player in all of the CIF Southern Section. Quite an accomplishment. With us tonight is Principal Sean Bolton from Newport Harbor High School. Members of the board, Dr. Navarro, Executive Cabinet, distinguished guests, thanks for recognizing Kathy Tong. I'd like to first congratulate CDM football and tennis. They obviously beat us this year. <laughs> Pains me a little bit to say that, but Kathy Scott and I have always had a great relationship, and you should know that Danny O'Shea, the head coach at CDM, sent our head football coach a message after we lost in the semifinal game. He's a class act through and through, encouraging, supportive, and it really meant a lot to our coach. So again, applaud CDM for their sportsmanship and their collegiality within the Newport Mesa Unified School District. So Kathy Tong, it's quite a story. She arrived to America four years ago, did not speak English, did not play golf at all. Four years later, she beat 125 golfers at the CIF final. She shot six under at Los Serranos Country Club. Los Serranos is a par 74. She shot 68. The closest golfer was 73. Wow. So she blew away the field by five strokes, and the day started in 47 degree weather. And so she has arrived, and now we have every golf coach in the country calling Newport Harbor <laughs> High School to see what, in, what Kathy is all about. She is a phenomenal Newport Harbor High School student athlete. We couldn't be prouder. And as you know, Trustee Yelsey mentioned, tennis is, is, Southern California is the hotbed for tennis, but it's also the hotbed for golf, like Texas and Florida. And it's produced golfers like Nancy Lopez, Heidi Voorhees, Tiger Woods, Johnny Miller, I could go on and on. And now California in the southern section has produced Kathy Tong, and so is the Newport Mesa Unified School District. So we should all be very proud. So I'd like to present the coach, Coach Tarnow, who is coming up with Kathy and her mom, Donna. exciting sports year. I'm really glad to have Newport Harbor in there too. <laughs> and Kathy, do you do you have plan you're a senior, correct? Do you have plans on what you're doing next year? She's 
She what? Can you, can you come up? Can you? Kathy, with Kathy. Yeah. Kathy, come up here. <laughs> come on down. I'm thinking next year to put more time on golf and um, and thinking if I want to go to college or turn pro. Ooh. Well, congratulations and good luck. It's an amazing story. Can you imagine having that as a decision you have made? Oh my God. So Kathy, Kathy will take her fifth year at Newport Harbor High School like some English language learners oh, do, okay. and she will be eligible, we're hoping through CIF, to compete for a fourth year because you get four years of oh, eligibility. Wow. Ooh, and hey. I've signed up to be your caddy on the pro tour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. That's awesome. Great news. Um, that was really exciting. And we still have more recognition, so I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Sir. Okay. Um, good evening, Vice President Yelsey, board members, Dr. Navarro, cabinet, and uh, esteemed guests. It is a privilege to announce tonight that California School, Killybrook School, Polarino School and Sonora School, all elementary schools, have received California Distinguished Schools recognition. Each year, this, this, this recognition alternates from elementary to secondary, with this year recognizing elementary schools throughout California. There were a total of 35 schools recognized as California schools throughout Orange County this year, with NMU, NMUSD having four of them, which is the second highest throughout the county. So that is a, a, a real mark, a, a real piece of recognition in regards to our performance uh, across the county. So. Uh, real heads, I can't say enough about the outstanding work that these schools are involved with. The California Distinguished Schools program's intent is to recognize outstanding education programs and excellence with implementing the state standards. To do this work, it takes a village. The collective work that allows schools to achieve at high levels and close the achievement gap occurs as a true partnership between all of our stakeholders, including classified employees, certificated employees, parents, families, and community members. Under the California School Recognition Program for Distinguished Schools, there are two categories in which schools can become eligible to apply for the California Distinguished School Recognition. The first one is closing the achievement gap, and the second one is exceptional student performance. All four of our schools were recognized under the first category of closing the achievement gap. Under this category of closing the achievement gap, there were a number of benchmarks and indicators that schools needed to meet that we would be happy to describe uh, in detail in future meetings and also are available on the website at the California Department of Education. Official state recognition will occur at the California Distinguished Schools Award Ceremony on February 10th at the Disneyland Resort. With that said, we are very proud of all four schools that have met the qualification requirements and each school is here this evening to spend a few minutes sharing the model, program, and practice that they described in their applications and also to recognize staff members in attendance. We will start with California School. Um, unfortunately, Principal Ryan Longacre is not able to join us tonight, but lead teacher at California School, Jamie Ropp, is here to represent California School. and her entourage. <laughs> Good evening, members of the board, Dr. Navarro, cabinet, staff, union leadership, and students and community. It is a pleasure to be here this evening and it's an absolute honor to speak on behalf of California Elementary and tell you a bit about the collaboration, dedication, and hard work that makes our model program possible. In collaboration with our parent community, our school foundation, and our PTA, our entire staff works alongside one another to achieve academic excellence through technology and the arts. We value one another and firmly believe students deserve to learn and grow in a safe, engaging, and rigorous learning environment. We expect our students to demonstrate our core values of respect, responsibility, and readiness at school and in the community. 
of ourselves, we expect the same. While there are no doubt many factors that contribute to our momentum forward in closing the achievement gap, we believe that our emphasis on the arts, particularly on band and music theater, have played an important role. Leveraging the performing arts in order to promote academic excellence, in our opinion, makes us somewhat unique. Our model program incorporates two levels of show choir and two levels of band. The goals of this program are to teach performing arts, encourage literacy development, and foster social emotional well-being and connectedness in a low-risk engaging learning environment. Junior varsity and varsity show choirs focus on music theater, providing ways for students to participate in on and off stage roles in productions such as Annie, Aladdin, and The Lion King, which is our current production. Intermediate and advanced bands feature brass, percussion, strings, and woodwinds. Like show choir, musicians in our band have the opportunity to perform in a variety of settings and for a variety of audiences. Band members have the added opportunity to participate in competitions throughout the community. With two levels of show choir and band, we are able to accommodate a wider range of abilities. More accomplished students mentor those developing foundational skills, and beginners benefit from the learning alongside students with advanced skills. Thus, our program offers students the ability to showcase their unique talents, and at time, requires them to draw upon their leadership skills. As performers, students model the skills of prosodic, accurate, and fluent readers and speakers, and they see how success and growth is contingent upon hard work, regular practice, and success successfully managing the discomfort that comes from taking a risk. This draws directly on the work that is being done in our classrooms. The rigors of performance require accurate reading, proper intonation and inflection, exposure to rich vocabulary and complex narrative structures and proficiency with public speaking. Student involvement in our program has grown since its inception and the demographics of those that participate closely mirror the wider demographics of our campus. With this program, we believe we can offer students a unique experience that enriches the learning environment. While chronic absenteeism and suspension rates have historically been low for us, we strongly believe that when students feel connected to their learning and to one another, absenteeism and poor behavior can effectively be mitigated. Students are engaged, improving their skills, and learning alongside diverse groups of peers. But the program also engages our parent community as it requires the support of a number of liaisons and volunteers. While there is so much potential for how we might continue to develop and grow this program, we are very pleased by how it brings our diverse community of learners together and provides authentic reasons to draw upon the skills and concepts they are learning in our classrooms. So thank you for our, the support of our program and thank you for giving me the honor of sharing about the hard work done by students, staff, and parents at California Elementary. Thank you. Great. One of our shining stars would be, I, I would be remiss without speaking of him directly, is Nick St. Royal is the shining star of the program. Do you have, do you have other teachers? Do you have other teachers I just here wanted just well? to say thank you, Newport Mesa, for being so supportive of the arts in my 12 years here. And I've always been a firm believer that the arts improve test scores, and, and this is just fabulous. So thank you again for supporting the arts. Do you have <laughs> Kathy? Do you have other staff, uh, other teachers yeah, here? All under the oh, I know. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Losing my voice too. I don't want to lose. Oh, you I know. <laughs> Before we move on to the next school, I want to also acknowledge uh, Jake Topetti, who's in the back there, who's uh -huh. a former principal hey. here at California, <laughs> and all of your hard work in leading this school. Okay, our next school is Killybrook, and uh, we are the, have the fortune of having Dr. Lori Hogard come up and join hey, us. Hello.
Good evening, Vice President Yelsey, members of the board, Dr. Navarro, cabinet, staff, students, and community. It's a great honor for Kelly Brook to earn this recognition from the California Department of Education. And as a Title I school, this recognition is even more special with the award criteria for closing the achievement gap. When I think about how to best describe our work at Kelly Brook, three words come to mind. Engagement, equity, and excellence. Engagement because of the way our Killybrook team intentionally engages every student in meaningful learning and social experiences every day. <coughs> equity because of our team's unwavering commitment to equity. At Killybrook, our staff has made a firm commitment that the demographic characteristics of our students, especially related to family income or home language, as well as any difficult life or family circumstances, will have no predictive relationship to a student's achievement and social emotional well being because of our effective instructional systems and positive school environment. Excellence because our team holds itself to a high standard for the continual pursuit of excellence in everything we do for our students. I'd like to take a moment to recognize the collective work of the entire Killybrook team. We have several Killybrook staff here in the audience this evening representing our team. And it's the daily collective work of each and every one of our Killybrook staff members that results in success for our students. As you may know, Killybrook School has consistently demonstrated high rates of academic achievement as well as sustained growth. Killybrook has demonstrated increases in both English language arts and mathematics on the Smarter Balance tests every year for five years in a row. It's exciting to see Killybrook rated in the blue, the highest level on the California School Dashboard. And we attribute this combination of high achievement and sustained growth to several factors. One, the expert classroom instruction provided by a highly trained and dedicated teaching staff. The efforts of our skilled and committed classified and support staff. Our intentionality around the alignment of standards, instruction, and assessments a caring, motivating school environment, our research-based multi-tiered systems of support, and the continued efforts to engage our very supportive parent community. In the Distinguished Schools application, schools were, were asked to identify just one model program or practice out of the numerous programs and practices that have to converge on a school campus in order to gain results for students. For our application, we chose to highlight our SOAR program. SOAR stands for Strategic Offerings to Accelerate Academic Results. And it is the Tier 2 Small Group Instructional Support Program at Killybrook. It's one of our important six exceptional systems under the No Excuses University model, of which we adopted back in 2007. SOAR supplements the Tier 1 core instruction with students assigned to small literacy, math, and social-emotional groups based on their individual needs. Last March, I provided you with a comprehensive overview of the SOAR program as part of a presentation on our district's multi-tiered systems of supports. So tonight, I wanted to take the opportunity to quickly update you on just one of the many components of the SOAR program. And it was the one that was a new strategy that we implemented last year as an innovation to support our students with math. As you know, the teaching team at Killybrook has invested considerable time in implementing the instructional shifts required by the Common Core Standards. It's been an intentional and strategic multi-year investment of professional development and then putting it into action every day in our classrooms. Last year, our teaching staff took our professional development efforts to the next level with school-wide participation in the research-based cognitively guided instruction, otherwise known as CGI, training series for our entire teaching staff. And while we're certainly seeing the fruits of our labors with school-wide increases in math of 23% of our students meeting our exceeding standard in math, so 23% increase over the five years, we're also seeing some incredible results for our, our approach to math support. As I shared with you last March, we decided to focus our SOAR math support on the fifth grade based on the data trends that we saw from site, district, county, and state that historically showed some dips happening as students are trying to master the fifth grade content before entering the middle school math continuum. 
The small group supplemental instruction for fifth grade students at Killybrook was designed to address unfinished learning from prior grades while also enabling the students to learn their grade level content, especially in the area of fractions. The understanding of fractions is critical to mastering the fifth grade grade standards and there's a body of research that links the understanding of fractions in elementary school to their long-term math success. Our investments in the Tier 1 core program at Killybrook, coupled with the strategic focus in Tier 2 math support, yielded impressive results. We were thrilled that in spring of 2019, the fifth grade student group at Killybrook as a whole had the highest percentage of students scoring at meeting and exceeding standards out of all of the fifth grade cohorts across the 22 elementary schools in our district. It was a total of 81%. When we disaggregate that data for only the students who participated in the additional math support, we also see a very significant growth pattern from the prior year with 73% of the students that received the support scoring at or above standard as compared to about half from the year before. These results demonstrate the power of a collective impact of high quality tier one core instruction in the classroom coupled with strategic tier two support. So in closing, I'd like to thank you for recognizing our schools this evening, and we appreciate your support as we continue our work to support all students to succeed. And I'd love to have our team from Killybrook that's representing tonight come on up. We have... Kurt, before you go on to the next one, I just wanted to make a comment to Lori. Um, I'm just so impressed that your entire staff has been through CGI. Some of us attended um, some of the math PD with elementary schools as well as high schools this week. And it's so impressive what you're doing in that program and the fact that all your teachers are doing it. I mean, it would be great if we could have every teacher in the district mm -hmm. go through it at some point, but I think that's pretty remarkable. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Okay, our next school is Paularino Elementary School with Dr. Amy Nagy. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Vice President Yelsey, members of the board, Dr. Navarro, cabinet, staff, and guests. As um, Kurt said, I am Amy Nagy, the proud principal of Palerino. Thank you for giving this, us this opportunity to celebrate together. We are here today because of an amazing, dedicated staff, many of whom are here tonight, and our outstanding students who live our pledge, good, better, best, never let it rest until our good is better and our better is best. We also have a very supportive community that expands beyond our parents. Our journey together began six and a half years ago. It's difficult to describe this journey in just a few short minutes, so I will hit the highlights as described in our Distinguished Schools Best Practice Strategy that we call Reading Our Way to College. <laughs> as a No Excuses University school, we believe all children deserve the opportunity to be educated in a way that prepares them for college. We believe that all children can be academically successful, and we believe that together we have the power to make their dream a reality. When we began our journey, the first and easiest fix that we identified for improving our students' independence 
um, reading was helping to improve their independent reading habits. At that time, most of the students were not choosing to read, and so we started with a goal to get them reading independently. We helped identify their reading levels, and we set goals for them to read every day for at least 20 to 30 minutes. We tracked their progress, we gave them feedback, we set time for reading in the classroom, additional library visits to check out books, and we communicated our expectations that students read at home daily. Also, as Mary Poppins has said or sings, sometimes it takes a spoonful of sugar to help the medicine go down. <laughs> so, because many of our students saw independent reading as an unpleasant activity, <laughs> we have incorporated a lot of incentives. <laughs> students receive a ticket for successfully completing a reading quiz on a book that they've read at their level. These tickets are added to our monthly opportunity drawings for two two class popcorn parties. In addition, all students who are meeting their six-week goal are invited to a party with me, our administrative assistant, other school staff, and teachers. We've had dance parties, carnivals, special art projects, treats, buddy activities, slime parties, and more. <laughs> when we first started the program, we had about 25 students who met their goal. Um, on Friday, we had a goal period that just ended, and we had 331 students that met their goal. Wow. This is 85, yeah. <laughs> This is 85% of our students, and consistently over the past few years, we've had between 85 and 92% of our students meeting their independent reading goals. Once we had our independent reading practices systematically in place and operating school-wide, we moved to implement small differentiated reading support for all students at all levels. This is in addition to our strong core instructions. Students participate in 45 to 60 minutes of data-driven dif um, data differentiated instruction. Schedules are coordinated by grade level, and in addition to classroom teachers working with small groups of students, our special education uh, teachers and staff provide instruction. We hired four additional uh, hourly support teachers to provide prescriptive reading support. We also have an additional instructional assistant and our amazing St. James volunteers. Um, we are currently up to 18 volunteers from St. James that participate in supporting our primary reading instruction weekly. We added additional resources and materials. We created a literacy lab with an extensive leveled library and other supplemental resources. For the past couple of summers, we've also provided below benchmark students with a targeted three-week jumpstart program. And last year, we added an upper grade book club for um, one of our after-school offerings. Our latest school-wide practice we began last year. We added a school-wide English language development time. All students across the entire campus are receiving support with their English language development at the same time. This year, it's at the end of our day from 1.45 to 2.15. By committing to this time school-wide and dividing students into groups based on need, we're more consistent with our implementation. Our data showed that even our English-only students needed support with English development. Again, the instruction is data-driven uh, data and differentiated. Our TOSAs have provided us with professional development and have helped us to identify best instructional strategies. And we like to party, so we also celebrate our accomplishments. At the end of January, coming up in just a few weeks, we will be recognizing the 20 26 students that have just been reclassified. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's great. As I've mentioned, we are a data-driven school. We evaluate our practices and we make changes based on our data. In 2015, 39% of our students were meeting or exceeding the standards on the ELA SBAC. Last year, we had our best score yet with 60% meeting our, or exceeding standards. That's a 21% gain. 
when disaggregating the data, we also are seeing good gains with grade levels, cohorts, and subgroups. And in addition to the SBAC data, we look at our Acadians reading data, wonders assessments, and IRL data. Our average um, IRL scores over the past five years are up 17.94%. So what I've described for you this evening is one example of how we have systematically identified a challenge and worked to implement several school-wide practices to make improvements, little by little, better and better. There is so much more that is awesome happening at Palerino. As an entire staff, we meet most Tuesdays to participate in staff development activities, review practices, set goals, reflect and plan for improvement. Today, they convinced me that we should cancel our meeting so they could attend tonight. <laughs> for our students and parents, we set clear expectations, we celebrate our successes, and also we put a big emphasis on their social emotional learning. Each week we gather as a school. We come together at Flag Deck on Fridays. This is our opportunity to communicate with our students and our extended school community about what is expected. We also share our progress and we ce celebrate the successes. On this day, we encourage our community to wear Palerino blue. Wearing blue unifies us visually and also shows our school pride. So as I mentioned in my introduction, I am the proud principal of Palerino for so many reasons. Palerino is a great place to learn, and I thank you again for allowing us this time to celebrate with you. And I invite our staff to come on up and celebrate with us. And we have um, teachers here, our intervention teachers, we have classified staff, special education staff, so lots of great representation here from Palerino. Okay, and our final school is Sonora School with Principal Mia King. Good evening, Vice President Yelsey, members of the board, Dr. Navarro, cabinet, and distinguished guests. It is an honor for Sonora to receive the California Distinguished Schools Award. Sonora's mission statement is that the staff, students, and parents are committed to creating a school that accepts no limits to the academic success of all students. What this statement doesn't reveal about Sonora is our commitment to provide high quality instruction, ensure equitable learning experiences, inform and educate parents, and close the achievement gap. Sonora also cultivates a welcoming and caring school environment, positive relationships between staff and students, and the belief that all students will succeed, regardless of language proficiency level, socioeconomic background, and special educational needs. I'd like to recognize the collaborative work of the entire Sonora staff, several staff members, and the former principal, the legend Christine Anderson, <laughs> are here this evening. It is under Christine's leadership and the collective work of the staff that Sonora has attained such high levels of achievement, most recently receiving the Distinguished Schools Award in 2016. For our, model, for our model program, we chose to focus on the Tier 2 Intervention Support System, 
which is one of the six exceptional systems of the No Excuses University model. Our intervention system supports the Tier 1 instructional program and provides a variety of interventions, including universal, targeted group, and individual. We have pledged to provide interventions that address both the academic and social emotional needs of all of our students. Targeted group instruction offers small homogeneous grouping that addresses specific academic needs. Students participate in 30 to 45 minute small group instruction before or after school and during the instructional day with instruction provided by classroom teachers and intervention teachers who push into and pull students out of classrooms. <laughs> students needing support in early literacy and comprehension participate in systematic instruction and phonological awareness, phonics and sight words, otherwise known as SIPs, the pre-teaching of grade level reading skills and concepts and guided reading. Students needing support in math concentrate on math fluency, strategies grounded in cognitive guided instruction, reteaching of concepts and key skills exploration activities. In addition to ac academic interventions, Sonora also addresses the social emotional needs of our students through ongoing collaboration of staff members. The school psychologist facilitates several interventions to support our students. These include a weekly grades three through six program for the education and enrichment of relational skills group on developing interpersonal skills, a grade six girls lunch group on relational aggression skills and how to resolve conflicts, a group for some specialized academic instruction and general education students to gain skills in regulating their actions to foster problem solving abilities, a grade six mind up mindfulness group and a grade two second step social skills group. This school year, one area that we'll be exploring is utilizing intervention compass to integrate our data into one system to better meet our unique students needs. As we continue to work to close the achievement gap, thank you for your continued support and for recognizing our schools this year. <coughs> and if the Sonora staff can come up. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Congratulations, gals. <laughs> Okay, so in closing tonight, we would like to thank all of the staff members for coming out tonight and uh, helping us to celebrate these four schools. And finally, we would like to thank Dr. Navarro and all of our board members for really helping all of our schools raise the bar for all students and close and continue to work on closing the achievement gap uh, for our students. So we thank you for your support and we look forward to celebrating with these schools at the recognition ceremony on February 10th. Have a good evening. Okay, thank you. That was super exciting. Can we all go home now? It's yeah. like, uh, um, we're going to take just a five minute break right now, so we'll be back by 7 05. Perfect. Okay, we're back now. Um, we're on to item 12 community input. This is black. 
This is an opportunity for the public to address the board on items within the subject matter jurisdiction of the board. Per board policy 9323, each individual speaker will have three minutes and the speaker may not cede unused minutes <coughs> to other speakers. <coughs> Sorry, I'm trying not to get the cold. Um, <coughs> and there is a maximum of 20 minutes of comments per topic. With board consent, the president may increase or decrease the time allowed for public comments, depending on the topic and the number of persons wishing to speak. The board, staff, or members of the public may request, <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice, <coughs> <coughs> may request that a specific item on the consent be moved to discussion action. Requests to move consent items must be received prior to the time the board takes action on consent calendars. All comments are recorded in full <coughs> on, the, on the meeting video record. When addressing the board, it is helpful if you state your name and address for the video record. Ugh. Okay, we, <coughs> we have uh, two comment cards by uh, birth. Dr. Dowdy. Would you like to speak to both of them now? Okay, so the um, later, okay. So good evening, I'm Britt Dowdy, President of the Newport Mesa Federation of Teachers. So uh, good evening, um, Vice President Yelsey, members of the board, Dr. Okay. Navarro, members of the community and public. Um, so I wanted to announce that we reached a tentative agreement and negotiations Friday night with the district. Uh, so we are moving forward with the ratification process. Uh, for members of the community, um, uh, we are in the process of getting the summary and TA information out to our members. In fact, I'm kind of working on it now, and I was working on it all afternoon. Uh, so we are getting it to our members tonight, uh, and we'll figure out if there's, you know, what needs to go out uh, in a more public venue. Uh, but we uh, have a 15-day posting period, and we look to uh, close the ratification vote on the 31st and we'll be able to report to Ms. Olson the resort, results of that um, um, a vote on the 31st. So we're hopeful that it will be ratified and that we are able to bring it uh, as a board agenda item at the next meeting in February. So yeah. um, she was uh, out today. I figured Ms. Olson would probably give you an update at some point or maybe Dr. Navarro gave you an update earlier today, but I was leaving it to them to go into the details. So thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, great. And Thank you for your, all your hard work and your entire team. Okay, con, uh, consent calendar. Oh, gosh. Do I have a motion? <laughs> Move to adopt. Consent calendar. I'm going to read. Oh, there's only one speaker. Oh, okay. okay. Yep. Are we not doing 13? Oh, superintendent report? We have all those reports. Oh, I'm sorry. 13, 14, 15, okay, 16. Cool. My bad. But superintendent at the time, report. When it happens, I move. Superintendent report. Okay, well, I just would like to follow up on uh, what Dr. Dowdy said. I want, I want to thank both teams for working uh, together and going through this process uh, and for uh, really going the extra yard uh, and, uh, and, and uh, spending a lot of hours together in the last uh, few weeks. So uh, it's, uh, it's not something you can do alone. It's always an effort, and everybody has to work together. So I just want to I tell them how much I appreciate their team working with our team to, to reach this uh, tentative agreement. So we look forward to their process and hopefully receiving uh, good news later in the month. Thank you. Student board members reports. Kenya, would you like to start? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can just talk normally. I'll make oh, sure okay. you hit it right. Okay, so hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Kenya Rocha. I'm here representing Estancia High School. Uh, for an event that's happening right now is right now we have our uh, Austra Australia delegation with us that arrived this week so they're excited to be spending three weeks with us and for a small sports update uh, boys varsity basketball had a game last Friday versus Saddleback and won 71 to 39 Ooh. and today mm -hmm. girls soccer had their first battle of the bell game versus Mesa so mm -hmm. that's exciting um, some upcoming events we'll be having our school is tomorrow there's a meeting for the Humans Relation Task Force and Lean Crew is hosting a cocoa and cram session during finals week and ASB is making motivational and fun posters to support the students. And right now ASB is getting ready to host their winter formal which is a Casino Royale theme at the Costa Mesa Country Club which is February 8th. Thank you. Thank you. 
starting at that end. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Caroline Brewster and I represent Corona Del Mar High School and here is a brief update about what's been happening on campus. For an academic update, the Science Olympiad had their first warm-up competition this past December. Around 50 talented science students from grades seven to 12 are preparing weekly for their bigger competitions this month. In sports, clearly our fall sports have been very successful and we are very proud to have student athletes with fantastic sportsmanship. Um, and to kick off the winter sports season, boys basketball won their first tournament this winter break. As for recent events, girls basketball secured the victory during last week's Battle of the Bay versus Newport Harbor. And our monthly student voices panel also met last week and addressed the topic of competitiveness and college pressure at CDM. In upcoming events, HRC has planned Be Kind to Your Mind Week. This week emphasizes prioritizing mental health and helping students cope with upcoming final stress. Battle of the Bay Boys basketball is this Friday at home, and it is our Pack the Gym night. It is expected for many students to attend the game to cheer our boys on. And that's it, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, just give me one second. All right, there we go. Um, <clears throat> hi, everybody. My name's Luke Graham. Uh, I'm representing Early College High School. High school. Uh, good evening, Vice President Yelsey, um, Board Trustees, Dr. Navarro, uh, members of the Cabinet, and distinguished guests. Mm -hmm. So let's get through this real quick. Um, academic update-wise, ECHS just returned from winter break um, yesterday and started our second semester with the start of 2020. We are in the process of identifying our first semester principal honor roll recipients for students who earned a 3.5 or higher unweighted academic grade point average in all high school and college courses taken as well as who received three or more outstanding citizenship marks at the end of our first semester. Our students will be recognized with their accomplishments during class lunch meetings occurring next week. Um, we don't have any sports. Uh, for the <laughs> fifth, it always gets a laugh. I, <laughs> it's not a joke. You actually do. <laughs> <laughs> um, for a fifth consecutive semester, our school-wide GPA was better than a 3.2 in all high school and college courses combined taken by our students. This past semester, our school registered a 3.22 school-wide GPA. Mm -hmm. We just completed our shoe drive right before our winter break. Hundreds of shoes were donated by our students, families, and community members. This Friday, all of our sophomores will be taking a college field trip to UC San Diego. Actually, that is juniors. Juniors will be taking a field trip to UC San Diego. Each year, approximately 20 to 25 percent of all ECHS students enroll directly into a UC. Next month, we are conducting our tour of the middle schools uh, to do our ECHS presentation for eighth graders who may be interested in applying to ECHS for the 2020-2021 school year. Our school applications uh, are available to download from our website as well as hard copies are available at our front office. The early action application deadline is March 13th with the regular application deadline set for May 1st. Lastly, our school is getting ready and excited for our upcoming Northern Lights themed winter formal to be held at the Costa Mesa Country Club on February 1st. More than half of our student body attends this event, which has become our largest off-campus event of the year. Thank you. Great, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Bailey Bogard with Newport Harbor High School. So academically, uh, DECA, which is a business conference, uh, occurred this weekend in which IB business students were able to showcase their business models and work that they have prepared so far this school year. Athletically, basketball, both girls and boys have been doing very well and ASB has been able to bring out spirit to our home game so far. Uh, recent events for the first one is that our drama department just held auditions yesterday for our spring production of Little Shop of Horrors, which <laughs> will be happening late spring, and we actually got the full large plant person to work oh. it, so it's going to be huge, which is oh. awesome. Uh, and secondly, our winter rally 
occurred on Friday in which there was a violin performance, a varsity dance, cheer, and pep squad performances. Mm -hmm. Uh, and upcoming events, we have our winter formal like the other schools do. Um, it's set to happen on Friday, January 31st at Knott's Berry Farm, and we are very excited for another Newport Harbor tradition to uh, occur. And unique information, um, our Youth and Government Club, full of 80 delegates, uh, will be traveling to Fresno this upcoming weekend in order to prepare for their annual um, trip to Sacramento in February. So, wow. thank you. Thank you. Great. <laughs> Good evening, board members, Dr. Navarro, fellow student board members, distinguished guests. I'm Catherine Pham, the student board representative for Costa Mesa High School. So we are excited to announce that over the weekend, our varsity girls water polo won first place in the gold division of the Diamond Bar Winter Classic. Freshman Kira Anderson was the gold division most valuable player. The CMHS girls water polo team is now ranked first in their CIF, CIF Southern Section Division. Um, the Costa Mesa traditional co-ed competition cheer won the CIF Southern Section Championships for the second year in a row. They are moving on to state in three days and hope to become USA champs for the fourth consecutive year. <laughs> this week is full of Battle of the Bell games. Girls soccer and basketball Battle of the Bell is today at home versus Estancia. Um, boys soccer and basketball Battle of the Bells are tomorrow also at home. Next Friday, our sixth annual Dancing with the Teacher show will be put on. This event not only embarrasses most teachers involved, it also <laughs> showcases the talent of the teachers and our CMHS dance department. Hope to see everyone there. <laughs> the next Delta program field trip is the seventh grade Catalina Island Marine Institute trip at Fox Landing, which will take place on April 1st through April 3rd. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Now, uh, Harbor Council PTA, Mrs. Link. Um, good evening, uh, Vice President, <coughs> ELC, board members, Dr. Navarro, and guests. Also cabinet, welcome. Um, membership, Harbor Council membership is only 8% away from meeting our total membership for 2018-19. So we'll be, be starting our mid-year membership drive really soon. Our total membership as of right now is 6,552. Mm. Um, at our last Harbor Council meeting, we handed out certificates to the following schools who have increased their membership totals over last year. Those schools were Adams, College Park, Davis, Early College High School, Estancia High School, Killybrook, Mariners, Newport Harbor High School, and Pomona. I'm happy to announce that after a drawing of these schools, Killybrook will receive a $200 voucher and Adams receives a $100 voucher to be used to, um, for the 2020 PTA convention registration. Mm, so, our next Harbor Council membership incentive will be on our terrific teacher award held next <coughs> month. So we'll have more exciting membership stuff. Um, let's see, all reflections. The 4th District Reflections Art Gallery is on Saturday, February 1st at, at the Orange County Department of Education from 1 to 4 o'clock. We have 18 students representing Newport Mesa Unified Ooh. School District. Um, this is a drop-in, open house <coughs> style event. And uh, so, so if you miss the Harbor Council Reflections reception, this is a great chance to see all the fabulous artwork of all the creative activity of our students. I'm still trying to work on getting a little thumb drive so when they go further up that we can bring show and it. show you it up here. Okay. Um, a parent education series. Um, I want to give a mention to our next parent education series that will be held on January 22nd here at the Newport um, Sanborn Room from 6 to 7.30 where we'll be Angela Castanianos mm -hmm. will be presenting about basic parenting and it'll include Parent, parenting self-care. I think I'm going to really make a point to get to that. <laughs> I've uh, left a flyer up there, yeah, too, for you guys. Um, and our <coughs> next thing is advocacy. On January 24th from 9.30 to 11.30 at the Fountain Valley School District Boardroom, 4th District is hosting a forum, which will include Orange County School Superintendents, Christopher Downing, Alma Harris, Ramon... 
Mira Montes and Terry Walker. And Dr. Navarro was, was on that forum last year. It was really wonderful to see him speak up there on the panel. Um, this will be engaging in a very informative forum and it's open to all PTA members. That's it, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have to show your card? <laughs> <laughs> Informal reports, Dr. Navarro. Okay, um, okay. I just want to, um, you know, we've talked about systems, and hopefully uh, you'll, you started seeing how we are putting in systems. You heard our distinguished schools talk about how they're focusing on instruction, but they're putting in systems to support kids in instructional, on instructional, for instructional reasons and for, uh, and for social and emotional reasons. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> so I, I think it's important to emphasize that everything we're doing is not by accident. It's thought out. It's deliberate, it's been researched, and we're methodically moving ahead, identifying areas where we need to make it a practice rather than, oh, let's just solve this in the moment. Solving things in the moment doesn't create long-term solutions. And, I know, and, I, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that as we move along, we have some other projects that we're moving. Uh, and uh, later this spring, I, I would like uh, the deputy superintendent to talk to you about a major one he's, uh, he's uh, pursuing now that it's not ready for prime time, but will, will make a big difference in how uh, we operate our, our whole district and our secondary schools. Hmm. So I uh, just want to tell you that we continue to focus on identifying long-term solutions to problems so that when something comes up, we know exactly what to do. We know exactly who to, who to go for and uh, who to go to and exactly uh, how we go and solve, uh, solve an issue. So we're not going back and forth between four or five different people. Um, and I think that uh, another one that, and I'm, I'm, I don't know when Sarah and, uh, and John will be ready, but uh, they presented at the parents and I, told, and I shared a little summary uh, about their MTSS uh, presentation with the parents. And mm -hmm. I think that is another form of systems. Now, that's a district perspective, uh, but what are we doing to make sure that kids aren't falling between the cracks? And I think you heard some really good examples today mm -hmm. from our distinguished schools. So as our team goes around, I hope you'll hear that we are focusing on long-term solutions that will create efficiencies and be more effective to help our staff and help our students succeed. Mr. Holcomb. Yes, um, even though uh, summer seems uh, quite a few months away from now, uh, it takes a lot of planning for our uh, facilities team to complete uh, a number of the important projects that uh, you've asked us to do, uh, among which is the final air conditioning projects uh, at Newport Harbor and at Costa Mesa High School. Uh, there are a lot of, there's a lot of work to do and uh, thank you for approving the architectural contract recently. Uh, Ms. Zaresny is working uh, with the principals and with staff to figure out all of the little issues at high schools, you know, are very busy, uh, even in the summertime. And, uh, and we've had summer programs and those types of things. So she has been working uh, with everyone to make sure that we can accomplish all of that uh, with some specific plans for things like uh, purchasing the air conditioning units separately from the construction contract so that we can get them ahead of time. Mm -hmm. uh, all of this to make sure that the projects are completed before students return in August. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work underway right now, but uh, we're very excited. And uh, Costa Mesa High School uh, will probably be our most challenging one, but uh, there's a lot of great work going together to make sure that's happening uh, with Mr. Resney and Mr. Haley. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> the governor uh, released his budget, and um, it's largely a good news budget, which is um, really good news. Um, <laughs> it looks like... Um, um, uh, special ed. Sarah will get um, a little bit more than the, the Cheeto desk she usually gets to run the program from the governor, which is really good news. <laughs> there's some funding for special ed that's um, just absolutely uh, terrific. Um, there's some support for uh, technology for low performing schools and, and some uh, student nutrition program. There's some money for student nutrition, which is uh, very helpful. Um, I didn't see any uh, 
Anything in the budget for uh, board member Matoye and Fleur's uh, projects as they walk the uh, oh. <laughs> schools, but um, we'll see what we can do. I'm sure Mr. Holcomb will work his magic on. Uh, we still have four more schools. We will get to them. <laughs> so, anyways, it looks like a, a good budget, and we're so we're starting the the planning for that, and you'll you'll see us come to you with that at second interim. Okay, a quick great. question. Um, so there are there is some money for early childhood education. That's correct. There's a whole entire new office for yes. Early, yes. And they're right. And they haven't appointed a head of that office yet. But um, is some of that money going to come to us? Is that uh, for public school? Yes. Preschool? We would expect some of that money to okay. come here. But it's, it, that's not included in the basic aid? Yeah, that's a that's run as a separate program, so it's like a categorical program, which is helpful to us. Okay, good. Okay, I have an update for the community regarding parent school choice transfers. Uh, NMUSD allows parent school choice transfers for residents of the school district. <clears throat> Depending upon availability, the parent or guardian of any school-age student may request a school their child may transfer to. The parent school choice transfer request application period for this school year opens tomorrow, January 15th at 3 o'clock and closes March 15th at 11.59 p.m. Oh. <laughs> uh, for the first round, uh, parents will be notified regarding the status of their parent school choice transfer request application online by email or in writing by May 15th of this year. Um, we ask parents or guardians to please complete a parent school choice transfer request application on our website uh, that will be entered into a lottery which will rank the applications in priority order. And as a second piece to this, we do have a second round of parent school choice transfers and that window is going to occur um, between July 6th and August 3rd. And then um, we anticipate uh, a wait list to occur after we finish our first round and after we finish the second round, the wait list will start the first week of school. And more information will follow on that. But um, our application process opens up tomorrow. Great. As Kenya mentioned in her report, and thank you very much, uh, tomorrow night we have a human relations task force meeting at Newport Harbor High School at 6 o'clock. We've moved the meetings to high schools, hoping to get more student participation. Um, also, our new facilitator, uh, Dr. Neighbors from UCI, <coughs> runs the DIRA program, which two of our schools are involved in, Costa Mesa and Estancia, so we're hoping that will encourage more of those students to come to the meetings as well. And so the work moving forward for the Human Relations Task Force, Dr. Neighbors will be working with the subcommittees to create rubrics to evaluate program effectiveness <coughs> on the pieces in our implementation plan. And so it'll be really important to have the kids involved and the teachers involved to talk about those programs and, and how they felt they work for them. And so we'll coming up with rubrics to be able to evaluate those programs. Also, I wanted to let you know our dates for the Museum of Tolerance for our high schools, for our 10th graders, are already booked out. I will send that to Dr. Navarro. Um, we also have our weeks lined up for our Courage to Remember Traveling Holocaust exhibit that will be at our four comprehensive high schools for a week each. So those are booked out as well. So the plan is starting to... Uh, be in place and some of those dates are already booked so we will get those to you. Where is the meeting tomorrow at Newport Harbor? In the library? And uh, Good question. It's on our document. I don't remember off the top okay. of my head but I believe it's in that that I don't know what it's called but it's the that meeting room right off the library. Okay. I want to say it's the student it's the student something. Student Leadership Center. Student Leadership there, Center. there it is. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I, I have a quick question. Um, um, <laughs> and it left my brain. The Traveling Holocaust um, exhibit, is there going to be an opportunity or um, trans transportation something for uh, like early college to <coughs> visit? Or, and back bay if they choose. Yes, they're both going to partner with one of the other schools. Perfect. And so the 
the, the, the idea behind it is the 11th grade, the U.S. history classes will be going through the exhibit. We'll also have it open for our feeder middle schools mm -hmm. and for our feeder sixth grades. We're thinking, I'll work with Dr. Sir on that, whatever grade they feel is best that they're studying that, whatever's right. the most appropriate grade um, we'll do and have that open for them. There'll also be a night where PTA will sponsor a night for oh, parents. Right. So we'll have it open during one of the evenings. Um, we'll have something where we'll ha invite board members and community people and things kind of a kickoff to um, to PR it as well. So there'll be more information about that coming. But those uh, um, weeks are not until April. So we're, oh, okay. it's, it's a ways off. Okay. The um, Holocaust, um, their date is August 20th and 21st for the National Holocaust Day. So we wanted to do it in conjunction with that. Okay. Thank you. Mm. If I could, I also wanted to remind our community of the windows for applying for Davis Magnet School and our dual immersion programs, which are on a different schedule. So the window for Davis Magnet School and our dual immersion program at Whittier and our dual immersion program at College Park, those windows are from February 10th to March 15th. So they're on a different cycle, but um, that'll, that's the window for our Davis Magnet School program and our dual immersion programs. Again, that's February 10th and March 15th. So I'm really excited and optimistic about um, not only some of the things you heard this evening from principals, but some of the experiences I think um, some of you have been able to, to have this week around um, the instructional ideas and practices that we're, we've been supporting for the last several years. Um, and they're continuing. Uh, and I think they're really setting our high school uh, teachers up to make some really sound decisions around uh, really really living up to that, uh, creating that, that K-12 experience for kids. Um, in, in that vein, we will continue or are continuing our two new cohorts of CGI trained teachers. Um, this month will be the last of six days of training for two of our K-2 cohorts. Um, and I think it's, it's also kind of, uh, it, it speaks a lot in relation to the fact that there are 10 principals involved in those trainings, uh, 10 of our elementary principals, and actually seven of our, our um, uh, directors in ed services are also really, you know, diving into this this idea of making sure that um, kids are being positioned as really competent mathematicians in their classrooms and, and being given the opportunities to make sense of that. Our, our middle school will continue to um, uh, be trained uh, uh, for a sec third time this next week uh, around the five practices of orchestrating uh, productive mathematical discussions in their classroom, um, which is really grounded in that problem-based learning uh, that is also uh, a focus in our CGI training. So that, that K-8 experience is really starting to take hold and setting up our high school teachers uh, for the challenges of kids who are going, who are going to be coming in expecting um, really to be given opportunities to, to make sense of the mathematics, not just be told how to do it. Um, in that vein, uh, we did meet this last Wednesday with our steering committee who's going through a process and was able to see and hear from our K-8 teachers really what kids are um, being given the opportunities to do and experience in their math classes so that they could connect in making some decisions with the materials. Um, and as you know, we were, we will, we have been piloting uh, or using illustrative mathematics materials this year, the official pilot where, where teachers will be using and documenting evidence of alignment and effectiveness will begin February 1st um, and carry for six weeks through an entire unit. And then we'll take all that information and as you know, get back together and have probably some very healthy uh, debate uh, around what our decisions should be around, around materials uh, coming in April. Um, but we are, we are moving uh, and several opportunities uh, will continue to come your way to come and, and, and see it uh, and participate in it. So, and, and just from, from, from me and everybody you know, involved, thank you for all your support uh, with this. I'd like to uh, make an announcement and extend an invitation to all of our board members on behalf of College Park Elementary's Mandarin Dual Immersion Program. So as we know, uh, not only are they learning <coughs> language in the program, but they're also learning culture. And so this year, our Mandarin teachers in the Dual Immersion Program have been organizing and planning cultural events. And there are two events that they would like to extend the invitation. The first one is uh, on the Lunar New Year, uh, which is Friday, January 24th at 9.30, where they will be having 
their first Lunar New Year Parade. <laughs> and the second event is on Friday, February 7th at uh, 1 p.m., where they will have a Mandarin showcase, where they will be performing songs in Mandarin. So if you're available, we will send an invitation out to all of you. If okay. you could be there, uh, that would be wonderful. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, we are looking forward to kicking off 2020 with our third year of providing some specialized uh, professional development for teachers who work with students in special education. So one of the things that we've been really um, working hard is to collaborate with Ed Division, and I think we've done a really nice job over the years um, to have our teachers uh, alongside um, teachers who teach in general ed programs. But sometimes you just need a little uh, extra special ed love and some uh, more specialized training. So uh, over the course of um, several weeks, we will have um, several groups in. We have them divided out by secondary, elementary, and preschool. And then we have them by if they teach mild, moderate, or if they teach moderate, severe. And I'm gonna give you just a couple of the highlights of this, of this training. Um, so they're all going to get a little training um, on Synergy, which is our IEP program. And then uh, they're going to do a, a legal role play, kind of an IEP role play that um, was also presented at a principal's training, and it went over really well. It kind of demonstrates how you work better with, uh, with families and everyone's role on the team. And then um, they're going to talk a little bit about what are strengths-based practices, what are inclusive practices. Um, and then each group is going to have some little bit unique training for them. So those include um, assistive technology uh, with our assistive technology, uh, Joanne Padzer. They're going to talk about co-teaching, and they're going to have some uh, different teams, you know, from elementary and secondary who are doing co-teaching practices and talk about those. Um, at the secondary, uh, we're going to have uh, staff from CDM talk about unified sports, what that will look like. Uh, again, assistive technology, we will have uh, community-based instruction. Um, mm -hmm. What does that really mean for our students who go out? Dyslexia, assessment and report writing, and this is round one of this. This one, this will be a big focus for us next year. Um, we're setting this stage for how we can do all of the training on dyslexia next year, but this is a good uh, introduction to it. Um, talking about, uh, for our students who are in secondary, the individual transition plan, you know, how to plan for them either to go to career or college or uh, an, an alternate program. And then for our preschool students on uh, handwriting without tears and doing more <laughs> sensory strategies. So um, I would like to acknowledge the work of Candy Perella, who's kind of sitting in the back. She's the administrative director of special ed and all of our special ed coordinators who really um, do a nice job of putting this on. I can send you all the dates. They're at Harper. They're in mm. the multi-purpose room from eight to three. It would be great if anybody wants to just really come out and, and um, you know, say hi and put your support. So I'll give you the dates on mm -hmm. that. But really exciting, and we've gotten really good feedback over the years on that. Great. Good Thank stuff. You. Good stuff. Um, okay. Now on to consent calendar. Now, now I move it. <laughs> by Mrs. Mitchell. Move, move approval of the consent calendar. Is there a second? second? Wait, does, does Dana have to read the consent calendar? Please, stuff? I'm going to have Michelle read unless her voice is Wait. going to. <laughs> it is actually Belgian. Okay. <laughs> All items listed under the consent calendar are considered by the board to be routine and will be enacted by the board in one motion. This includes the consent calendars for business, education services, human resources, student support services, and superintendent. There will be no discussion of these items prior to the time the board votes on the motion unless members of the board, staff, or the public request specific items to be discussed and or removed from the consent calendar. Public requests of items to be discussed and or removed should be submitted in writing prior to the board's consideration of the consent calendar. Thank you. Okay, I have a motion by Mrs. Matoye, a second by Mrs. Black. Um, any comments? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Discussion action calendar. 18A, <coughs> adopt resolution 13120, authorization to establish a section 115 other post employee benefit trust. Um, and we have one card on this. Uh, oh. Do you want to have the staff report and then have the card? Okay. Okay. Yes. Mr. Trader. <coughs> so uh, the district offers what's known as other post employment benefits, and that consists of health and welfare benefits for those folks who retire between. Uh, retirement age generally 55 to when they become eligible for <coughs> Medicare at 65 and with that becomes an obligation so there so the district is obligated to provide those benefits to um, employees eligible employees and um, that obligation amounts to 123 million uh, dollars it's fairly significant and it's a it's a um, unfunded liability that is on the district's books, and we report that. In 2005, uh, the board had the foresight, and they uh, you passed a resolution creating a revocable uh, health and welfare OPEB uh, fund, which you have funded as resources have have allowed. This Section 115 trust. Um, is a irrevocable trust and uh, come, allows for some advantages. Uh, one, it allows for us to fund the liability, in other words, to lower the liability on, on your um, financial statements. And the other one, it, it allows some flexibility on uh, <clears throat> matching the dollars to an investment with a time horizon that that better matches the purpose for the dollars and therefore you can earn a little bit more interest in, in, in the end than actually lower the cost and lower the liability at the same time. Can you repeat that? Yeah, <laughs> that, that, what you just said. So <clears throat> because you can earn uh, greater interest, it means that you can lower the cost of our health and welfare expense and also lower the liability at the same time. Does the money in this account offset our obligation? Yeah. It can yes. be used to offset the obligation, yes. And actually, when, it, when you fund the trust, that money then will offset the liability on your financial mm -hmm. books dollar yes. for dollar. No, I actually, my other point was that we don't provide 100% of the benefits for the retirees from the time they pay what normal staff has to pay as their co-pays and things Correct. like that. It's yes. not like if you retire at 55, you get free benefits till you're 65. Yes. Because I want a refund if that's what it's changing <laughs> to. Okay, we're good. Mrs. Anderson? Mrs. Anderson. Um, yeah, I, I had a few questions. Um, when I saw this come up, I'm glad we're discussing, discussing it. I guess it was on consent, which to me, this is not a routine item. Um, so one of the concerns that I have is in going through and looking at past agendas. Um, as, as this current board configuration, we haven't really been a part of any discussions with this. The last time it was presented was um, November 26th of 2018. And so it for me, it sounds like there, we had an agree agreement, we had actuary service agreement, and then there was an agreement for a study. And then today on our agenda, we have a, a trust that we're having a resolution that is presented to us. And so I'm just concerned about the process. Um, one of the things that in looking for the background for November 26, it specifically says, <laughs> The district's other post-employment benefit liability includes obligations associated with health and welfare expenses for eligible district personnel who have retired between the ages of 55 and 65. Mm -hmm. um, so my question is, was this presented to, this seems like this, I know that it is also about retirement, but it seems like this could have been something that perhaps could have been presented to the joint benefits team. Did that happen? This is not a, a, a benefits issue. This is a funding investment issue because you have it on your books. Uh, so the board has promised to help 
retirees make it from retirement to uh, Medicare. And that's pretty rare. There, there aren't many districts who do that. So that's a very generous offering. Now, yes, they do pay whatever the employees pay. Mm -hmm. But this is not uh, an issue of benefits. It's an issue of investment. So you have on your books a $120 million deficit that you owe that money. What we brought to the table to you, and we've been talking about this for about 18 months, uh, we presented this to you, we brought this to you, we told you, we brought the financial uh, gentleman in that talked about what a, what a trust, what the trust would look like and what the benefits would be of the trust. Um, and so what we're doing here is uh, this money would go to defray that large uh, uh, lack of funding that we have. So in, and help it grow so that you could uh, assure your future retirees that we could yeah, get them to Medicare without them having to go and get their own insurance policies. Yeah, and okay? I think that the trust is a good idea. My concern is the process. So when I look at the November 26th, the last time that it came up and it talks about the core services, there's still a lot of questions that I have and I feel like I would have liked as a board member this, I mean, there's a lot of money involved to have more information. We got like a very short one paragraph. There's more that's on the agenda than was presented well, to I, us. And you? so, well, so for me, my concern is we went from having a study. I'm glad that, you know, I think it, Jeff, it sounds like came up with a, a great um, solution, but I'm just concerned about the process and the transparency piece of it. So for me, we went from having actuary services, a study, and now we have a resolution for a trust. So the process for me, um, I'm just a little concerned about. It, what, as, what, as what's missing? What's missing? I, oh. For me, I, this is literally like we got this on Friday. For me, I don't have enough information to make uh, to adopt a resolution for. A, a, I don't know anything about this. For me, it's we, just a lot. We did have it's we did have the investment two and team. Three are very different this from what. Since we did have the investment team come and present to this board, uh, and share with you what the trust options were. Uh, we did ask the board if we w if you wished us to continue down this, and you gave us direction to continue. We've the come back. Board. No. This yes, board. it was. I was not on the board yet. Okay. Uh, well, you do inherit what whatever. Uh, the board previously to you uh, gave us direction. Uh, so we've come back to you with the solution. This is an important uh, uh, step to take because by making it an irrevocable, 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 irrevocable. trust, ugh, uh, irrevocable. it uh, will lower your liability considerably. Uh, and uh, that's not the only benefit. Right, we have this liability anyhow. Mm -hmm. You have it this anyways. Will help us preserve the money for it. Correct. Is That's there correct. any issue with, uh, is there any downside to postponing this until what, uh, whichever board member needs more information can get it? I mean, is it, does it have to be done tonight? Can it be done next, next month? Is it, yeah, I mean, what's, is there a downside? And uh, no. Losing interest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A little bit of a delay. In, in now we're losing income that we could potentially make. It doesn't seem like well, there's much of a downside. I well, would and, like to uh, uh, at so least to the we, next uh, meeting. This is, uh, from our perspective, uh, we, uh, staff has done its due diligence. We mm -hmm. presented the options. We mm -hmm. were given direction. Mm -hmm. uh, basically what you're doing is you're putting it into account where you can invest it for more money. That's yeah. all you're doing. I understand. I think that it's great. I just, I would like more questions. I would like to have time to do that and d you, dive into it more and put it to our next. Do you see any meeting. downside to doing this? My, my questioning is around the process. For me, I'm not, I, I think that a trust is a great idea. I have a few more questions around it. So I'm going to move to approve and, and then we would, you know, meet with whatever board members that have questions. And uh, at that point, and uh, you know, because Need I that. think it's mostly just understanding, like she said, the process and you know, what are the benefits, what are the downsides to it. And, uh, but, but you're moving to approve but, it. But I'm moving oh. to approve, yeah. The resolution. Or I'm moving to adopt the okay. resolution. I'm s I'll second. <laughs> okay, and we do have one card, um, Dr. Dowdy. Hmm. Uh, 
So good evening again. Uh, as Dr. Navarro mentioned, uh, the, the OPEB um, benefits plan that we have is unique for our district compared to most of, most of California, and it is a, a great benefit to our employees. Um, and um, so I learned uh, when I, I was reviewing the board agenda uh, items rather late, so I need to get a little bit more information caught up to speed. Uh, Mr. Trader and I are making arrangements to have a conversation. I recommended that uh, we probably want to include all the employee groups, the heads of those groups, and then work with Ms. Olson to kind of coordinate uh, that information. Um, I do have several questions. I believe that protecting the OPEB money and putting it in, into uh, a protected um, uh, item, a fund, trust, whatever that is, is the right thing to do. I honestly don't know the details. This is well beyond my wheelhouse. Um, one thing that I know that we, I have learned through my advocacy work in CFT is we are concerned by the changes in GASB uh, and how the uh, actuarial and accounting practices have changed. It puts these, we have to report them on paper even mm -hmm. though we're funding them Mm -hmm. um, liabilities and it makes us look in worse shape than we actually are mm -hmm. uh, and so I just want members of the of the public to understand that uh, on paper it may look like something even though that's not what reality is um, is the best way to put it and Mr. Trader is excellent at explaining uh, how this is managed uh, <laughs> I have no recommendation whether you approve or delay the approval um, because I just I don't have any <coughs> information this time thank you Mrs. Jelsey that, that yeah, was my you. original reason I put my light on was um, when this first came to my attention, it, I was talking with Senator Morlock about it because it came out in the paper that we had this horrible liability out of nowhere and I'm going, oh my gosh, how could we have done this? And what I found out, other than the fact that the state needed to balance its budget, so what was typically an obligation for the state because it's up there was brought down here. Now OPEB is ours because not everybody does it. But then I said, but $120 million? And then what I, was, what I learned was we have to plan for every single employee to retire at 55. That retires. No, we have to plan that every employee that we have could possibly retire at 55 and use this money for 10 years. Oh. So we, that's why the obligation is so huge. A lot of our employees retire after 65. They never even take advantage of this opportunity. And very few retire at 55 because we love our jobs and we keep working and it's great. So it's on paper, that that's what Dr. Dowdy was referring to. It's on paper that we have this horrendous obligation, but really we don't have that much debt because we don't have that many people that we're actually paying for at any one time. But we have to budget as if Everybody was going to retire on the same year and we'd use it for 10 years. So I felt better that we weren't mismanaging money. That's in the OPEB world, but I thought the public might want to get an idea that that's why that number is so ginormous. And it's, it's when I was a principal, every time I wanted to hire a teacher, I had to budget in my school for the highest paid salary a teacher was going to make because someday that teacher was gonna earn that and the district had to be able to pay that eventually down the line. So I might hire a brand new teacher who would make $70,000 more than that. I had to budget for that one teacher. So it's, it helped me to understand the process. And by having this trust, we can then benefit by investing the yes. money better. So. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Another it's light. A, I have a light. Yeah. Mrs. Snell. Two more lights. Um, I just, um, I believe that's, I think we all believe that this is a good idea to um, get into this trust. But if there are board members that um, are not comfortable with having enough information and and there is no downside to postponing to the next meeting, uh, I think, and it would be um, prudent to uh, provide the time for those that need more uh, information to get more information, unless there is significant a, a a, something we're gonna lose or- Money. Yeah. Money. Yeah. Well, he's not telling me that. He's just saying no. He, you know, I'm not getting, you're telling me, but I don't know. 
Well, it's just the, it, it <laughs> delays uh, the program. And so we, you know, however long that delay is, is however long that, or however much that cost would be to the, to the district. So I, I, I don't have an estimate of how much that would cost you, but. Do you have a ballpark? Uh, well, are we talking a thousand dollars or are we talking 20,000? Well, it would be essentially 3% um, on 19 million for Ooh, okay. whatever okay, time well, that's period. That's a lot of money. That's yeah, what I want to know. You. Mrs. Bartow. Oh, um. <laughs> still digesting 3% on 19. <laughs> yeah, I just did the math in my head. Um, so I, I understand uh, trust and I understand finance. You know, I, I have a business background, but I don't always understand curriculum. And so when we have things come through that are curriculum adoption, sometimes I'll ask to have them delayed so that I can have more time to understand. Um, I, I do see the value in explaining this a little further. I mean, those are big, the accounting implications are, are worth understanding as a board member to do our duty. Um, I do think that the trust is the right choice, um, but I just feel like how can we build into our process ways for areas in which we aren't experts to have a little more information before we make this decision? Okay, well, we do have a motion and a second. Um, unless someone wants to change that, we should have a roll call vote on that and see how it goes. Right. Yeah, you can, uh, uh, yeah. She's asking about how to amend a motion. I always get confused. If she wanted to I, amend this motion. Can I, can I amend this motion to postpone it until our next board meeting? On oh, Dana's February motion. 11th. I'm not going for that. I mean, it, it's okay. Vote your conscience. You know, vote what you want to do. So yeah, the, pro the process. The process. I might as well just. The process is she not, makes her amendment, and you month. have to approve the amendment. Is that correct? Yes, she would have to <laughs> approve the change to okay. her amendment. Did did just a question? Did you happen to ask over the weekend or call for an appointment to talk with someone before the meeting? Or did you just come up with it today? I, I asked questions, yes. I did not get enough information to feel confident in making a decision of this magnitude. Okay. You. Ready for the roll call vote? Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, Ms. Okay, Hoare? Is it the same? I did, wait, 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 wait. I'm listening to Mrs. Snyder. This is a point of order that sh that she's asking. I, yeah, I think it's difficult when we are making motions before we have discussion, and so then we have to go back and either amend. I mean, for me, a point of order would be that we have the discussion and then we make a motion instead of this has happened occasionally when we've had discussion items and then it's. Robert's rule says move, second, and then discuss. So we moved and seconded. We can have a discussion now if you'd like to discuss now before we vote, but that's that's so Robert to, rules. That's Robert's rules. Yeah, we just had the discussion. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't enough discussion. If you have Do you questions, want to ask your questions. That's what now? I'm saying. Ask your questions. Well, my questions ha are not related to the trust. My questions are the process. So for me, we literally I got this on Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. So for me. I don't. Ha I want to. I want to just sit down and have a whole conversation as to like, what are the variables? There's several resolution. There's several pages on the contract that have options. No contract. There are, are projected results. There's different funding policies. Mm -hmm. I don't have that information. We as a board have not discussed that. Okay. So we went from having a study to a resolution with. I didn't get information on that. I'm just having a discussion about it, and I'm supposed to make a decision. So, Mr. Trader, is there any more information you could give, or that you would give after this? That would <clears throat> well, t yeah. tonight's decision is simply to set up the trust, not necessarily to fund it, but to oh. set up the trust. Mm -hmm. um, the the at the, the 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 specific attributes of of the investment program and those kinds of things would we would come back to you at a later date okay. so i mean there's for instance it says something about an initial one of the recommendations on the last contract says establishing an irrevocable trust with an initial deposit of approximately 18 million or 
there are different options. So we, we are not putting money in today, but I don't know what was decided upon. Have we gotten to projection results that came from this firm? We don't have enough, I don't have enough information. So that's why I would like to postpone it until our next meeting. I'm not saying no. I just want more information about what the study, I, I didn't get a report of what the actuary study was. That's some of the information I would like. Hmm. Well, um, if we're, so what I understand Mr. Trader saying is we have more to come back to you with. Today you're giving us direction to go ahead and so establish, establish the fund and he'll come back with what your options are as to what to do with the funding. So you're not putting many money in, is that correct, Mr. That's Crater? correct. So this, this is a, that we could go into a, a, a small group study session so that Mr. Trader and uh, Mr. Holcomb could meet in small group and go through the details with you on what your options are and explain to you the details that are in this and actually have the investment consultants there to help you as well. Great. For me, my concern is I want those before I'm making, I, we're setting up a trust and I'm making a resolution. So no, we are we're changing our trust, our current trust. We don't know. From, we're setting one up. It's establishing a new, it's a new. Well, we're right. setting up a trust, but we're not deciding what to do with the money in that trust yet. What the options well, are. It's telling you that there's yeah. options. Okay, we have a motion and a second. We'll have the roll call vote. Ms. Yelsey? Yes. <laughs> Ms. Black? Yes. Ms. Bartow? Yes. Ms. Anderson? No. Ms. Snow? Yes. Ms. Matoyer? Yes. Okay, five yeses and one no. We will work on a study session for, uh, for individual board members. Or in pairs, if you'd okay. like, whatever you'd like, to three. No. Uh, and uh, to work with Mr. Trader and Mr. Holcomb, and we will get the investment person there to give you a full, detailed explanation of what your options will be, so that when we come back, uh, if, you know, we couldn't take your suggestions at that meeting because that would be a serial meeting, but we could tell you what your options would be, so that when you come together as a board, you can discuss that here at the dais. But I would assume you would do that. With the whole board, yes, in that, public. Okay. Yes, that would be at a at a board meeting. Okay. Okay. 18B. Approve the memorandum of understanding between the Newport Mesa Unified School District and Waymakers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, thank you. The reason that we wanted to put this on discussion action is that this is a a new MOU uh, for this type of service for us. And as you know, we have really strong, committed community partners that do a lot of work for us. Uh, and with us, especially in the student services area. And so I've asked Dr. D'Agostino to come up and just give you a little background on both Waymakers and what, uh, what, the, um, what this MOU is actually going to do to help our students in the district. Thank you, Dr. Jockham, Vice President uh, Yelsey and <laughs> members of the board and Dr. Navarro, Executive Cabinet and guests, thank you so much for the opportunity to expound just a little bit on tonight's memorandum of understanding um, on uh, with Waymakers. We have a PowerPoint presentation uh, that's very oh, cool. short and quick. It's uh, it's 1,400 <laughs> slides. Um, and a video. You're going to speak quickly. The word way started out at, you know. Oh, sure. <laughs> uh, so, um, let's see here. Oh, perfect. Okay. So a little bit about Waymakers. They've been an, uh, a supportive agency in the community uh, for quite some time. Um, their executive board is made up of very influential people in the community, uh, individuals who come from the areas of finance, um, education, leaders in, in nonprofit capacities. Uh, there's uh, uh, members who uh, come from the Orange County District Attorney's Office, uh, as well as uh, the Orange County Board of Supervisors staff, and, and many other individuals who make up this nonprofit organization. Um, they engage in a variety of activities, ranging from therapy for families, victim assistance, gang prevention, et cetera. Um, the one that we're focusing tonight and the service that they're starting to provide to uh, schools is the AOD prevention and education, which is the alcohol, tobacco, and other drug prevention and education. Uh, 
So there is a youth substance abuse prevention project that is being funded by what we um, fondly call the, the millionaire tax. I don't know if you heard about this, but it's a 1% tax on incomes above a million dollars in California to support mental health initiatives and drug um, education and uh, resistance programs. Uh, Waymakers is uh, getting money for this. Uh, they will do a 10 session program in our middle schools based on an evidence-based curriculum. And um, all the project components are gonna be assessed through a comprehensive program and then we'll also have an evaluation piece. So as you know, uh, we have been talking for some time about the increasing prevalence of drugs and other substances among our youth and how that is morphing into electronic delivery devices called vapes. Uh, and so we're looking for a partnership where we can deliver a tier one intervention. That is an intervention that's gonna reach all our middle school kids um, eventually once we have full implementation. Um, so the, uh, the MOU is aligned to the LCAP. Uh, the Waymakers program is working with another uh, district, CAPO. Uh, Capistrano Unified is also partnering with them. Um, you, you can see in the local accountability plan, there are goals that are tied to uh, substance abuse education and prevention that we feel are, are aligned to what we're trying to do here. The California Health Education Standards also encourage us to seek out uh, drug education and intervention uh, for students. And then also the American School Counselors Association Standards, which there are like two or three, but if I put them there, it would have messed up my whole slide. And so <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I didn't do that one. But there are uh, elements of that as well uh, in, in the uh, American School Counselors Association standards. Um, what we're looking for in terms of short-term outcomes are as follows. I'm not gonna read all of these to you. But as you know, if there is a, if there is a trend uh, among the short-term outcomes, it is to increase the self efficacy and self-worth of individuals who in the middle school years are looking for things to validate themselves or validate themselves among their peers and drug use um, and presenting as a drug user, um, definitely uh, we see that among some students. As far as more long-term outcomes, um, we're looking obviously to um, reduce the number of students who are uh, using drugs and alcohol in our schools. This is a sample of the, of the uh, program. So as you'll see here, this is um, seventh grade down here. We've got seventh grade. We've got 10 lessons representing uh, a, a week for each lesson. This is the seventh grade curriculum. Uh, and so in the first five weeks, it's social skills development. And in the second five weeks, it's drug information and skills application. So uh, Waymakers will build a foundation of social skills efficacy, and then th we will then build upon that for uh, skill application for uh, what to look for, how to resist drug use, et cetera. Uh, very quickly, the responsibility of Waymakers will be to provide the curriculum. They will make sure the health educators um, are trained appropriately. They will provide all the materials and coordinate um, community prevention activities in our district. As far as Newport Mesa, uh, we will collaborate with them to identify how we're gonna best implement. We will provide approval and support uh, for Waymakers to reach our students. Uh, we will assist Waymakers in, in working with school leadership, uh, provide ongoing feedback, and then we will also uh, develop a plan to sustain the youth practices within the district. So this is a this is a, the first step of a, of a partnership and a journey with Waymakers that we're very proud of. And so when we look at this Newport Mesa Waymakers partnership, we'll start out by establishing the MOU tonight. We will then 
uh, meet with the principals at the middle school level, and we will determine our scheduling. As you know, uh, the middle schools have started a new health curriculum, which is taking up uh, a lot of time and energy and focus for many of the teachers whose classes would likely be targeted as the classes that would be most mm -hmm. ideal for students to receive this curriculum. So obviously I'm talking about PE and health classes. And so with a new health curriculum, uh, I think what we wanna do is make sure that we, I heard this, um, this morning in cabinet, I think it was my esteemed colleague, Mr. Drake, who said, we wanna go slow to go fast. And so with the implementation of, of this particular um, PowerPoint, uh, I'm sorry, with this particular project, mm -hmm. uh, we wanna make sure that we're doing it the, the right way. I wanna know if they went to the same uh, logo designer as we did. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I, great question. Uh, once we've determined scheduling, we'll implement the programming. We may have one or two schools that will pilot this spring, hmm. as early as this spring. We will go full implementation in 2020, 2021 hmm. for sure. Uh, then once we've implemented, we'll monitor and collect data. We'll then evaluate the effectiveness and then loop back with the principals oh, and uh, keep the cycle going in 21, 22. That's our vision. Um, happy to take any questions, but I would uh, urge that you approve this on consent. Mm. I have to make Any a comment. Um, I thank you that you have, that we're hopefully going to have a partnership with Waymakers. I have several close friends that work for them and they are not close. I've, I know people who work for them and I, they speak, <laughs> I've, I've seen really great things like at the Huntington mm -hmm. youth, youth Shelter and several of the different partnerships. So thank you for bringing them to our district. Absolutely. Okay, do I have a motion to approve? Make it. I'll make a motion. Go ahead. Second. Second. Moved by Ms. Anderson, seconded by Ms. Matway. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank, thank you very much. much. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Also, thank you for the presentation. I like seeing it all. Okay, board member reports. Start down with the other one. Sure. Um, may I give the youth sports meeting at the same time to sure. Sir Kate? No. Okay, then I won't. <laughs> no, you're no. obstinate. No, no. I, <laughs> um, Mrs. Black and I attended the youth sports committee, mm -hmm. and I know they would want me to let them know, let everyone know that the Costa Mesa United Golf Tournament is going to be on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So if you can stop by and say hi or enjoy or volunteer to help, it's a fun day. You don't have to golf. I've done it four years in a row. And everyone involved is glad that I don't golf, if you've ever seen me golf. Um, there's also the North-South football game that is sponsored by Costa Mesa United. And I, of course, I didn't look at my... Thank you. January 25th. I knew I'd have backup. <laughs> um, we have a wonderful meeting, and I thank Dr. Barmeister and Lance for coming because they answer all the questions that typically the board members have often had to answer and have had to have people there to ask for us. Um, we were all very, very hopeful to have the liaison meeting with the city of Costa Mesa where our district was going to talk with them, and the city canceled the meeting again, so we still haven't had that meeting, and that's where a lot of our wonderful collaboration and cooperation with the city and the school district occurs, so we can't wait for the new leadership to get us started. I thought it was rescheduled. The, well, that's what they say. The, and then they it. the all, the all, whatchamacallit meeting, joint got district. the joint district meeting got rescheduled, but oh. this is where um, Dr. Navarro and our leadership talk with their leadership without us, so they can really get stuff done. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and I attended other than all the Christmas, all of the winter holiday wonderfulness that we, since the last board meeting that we all went to and we went into our holiday season happy, I came out of the holiday season happy and then we came into this fabulous math training. I appreciate all the opportunities to join. Um, Mrs. Yelsey and I went to the math fellows workshop and Mrs. Yelsey and Mrs. Black and I attended the high school math adoption uh, meeting and thank you for bringing Joe Feldman in 
talking about grading with equity. And then everybody else needs to go check, check, check. Report. Yeah. So See, well, yeah. that's what <laughs> I did. That's I good. did all that. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed the. Um, I enjoyed the holiday programs too. I just went to elementary schools and. Um, it just doesn't doesn't get any cuter. I no. took some videos that um, were hysterical, but I can't share them. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's just so fun to see them hurting those little the oh, yeah. the preschools and the kindergartens and the TKs. That that's really good. So um, and I I too I think we all enjoyed the grading uh, for equity presentation, and I'm excited to hear about next steps. And um, I did attend the um, Australia Sister City Exchange Program Welcome, which um, I normally host, but um, I did this year because I thought my kitchen was going to be redone and it hasn't been redone yet. <laughs> but um, those kids, so excited to be here, so excited to experience public school um, in our city. Yes, I mean, they're just really excited. So um, uh, they, the PTA is um, at their next meeting, which is January 21st. Um, the, um, the delegates will be doing their full presentation if you're interested in coming. Um, but they will be visiting us correctly. Oh, all on oh, the same day. OK. Too. So um, we will get a taste and get to meet them. And um, it's a great program. Uh, I also um, <coughs> see everything. just one thing. Um, I, I, I spoke to um, Dr. Navarro about this, but I think it would be helpful for the public as well as all of us to get um, a better understanding, an update on the process um, Huntington Beach City District is going through um, to become basic aid. I know Huntington Beach has three different districts and they, um, like their high school district also involves Fountain Valley and so, um, and they, they're, one of their elementary districts involves another city as well, but Huntington Beach City is just Huntington Beach Schools and it involves the, some of the schools that our kids are going to. And I understand there's like 500 kids. That, yeah, through, throughout the whole district, not just in the city district. And um, so I'm getting calls. I'm sure you are too. Um, what's happening? Is it true? You know, what's what's the process? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, just, to, just to let when you know. When are they kicking us out? <laughs> we, had, we had that very discussion this morning. Oh, and good. so uh, uh, Mr. Lee Sung and I are going to oh. meet with the superintendent and see what their plans are. Wonderful. So I, I they're supposed to make helpful. a decision later this month. Okay. So uh, wow. we're, we're, gonna, we're asking to have, have a meal with him over lunch so okay. he can give us, give us an up-to-date in close, and I'll be able to share that information. That with would him. be great. <laughs> they're not making a decision about whether they're going to basic aid because that's not their decision to make. Is that correct? Or are they making a decision because you know what? they're on the board? That's, it's complicated. So when okay. we come back and have better information about mm -hmm. where they are at, then we can ask Jeff to tell you how districts can become Perfect. basic aid. Thank you. And also, I'd like to request a class from um, Killybrook on relational aggression skills. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, so, I wrote that down. Can too. I ask Mrs. <laughs> Snell, did the um, delegation, are any of them affected by the fires? You know what? We didn't bring it up. Um, okay. They had been up they 24 up hours, and mm -hmm. yeah, they they kind of told us their background. They've been up 24 hours, and it, it's a real downer. We, so we were actually told by the, or we were actually it was suggested by the teachers that we not bring it up at that particular point. I did ask the teacher if it was going to be part of their presentation. They touch on it, but. It, it's such a volatile, changing situation going, yeah. right now Still that, going, yeah. yeah, so. Thank you. Yes and no. Ms. Anderson. Um, I am thankful that we were able to have the second part of our study session on English language learners. Um, that was really wonderful yesterday. Um, I feel like it, we really learned a lot, and it was great to hear what could be coming down the pike um, for us. And it was also interesting to hear, I have several parents that have asked me about 
um, language testing for students who have special needs. And so to hear more information on that was really helpful. Um, and one thing I'm looking forward to also is just, I would love to have an opportunity to disaggregate some of the data by age rather than by grade, um, because I think that would be helpful for us to get a further understanding, because we have students of a lot of different ages within the same grade. Um, and then I also am thankful for HOG for the grant that they are giving us for the HOPE Center and all of the work that they do, particularly to serve um, vulnerable students. Um, and they are continuing to partner with us and do a lot with early childhood. Um, and then tomorrow is the first DLAC meeting of the year. And on Thursday morning, the Chamber of Commerce Education Committee is convening. Um, I also really enjoyed the CGI training that I went to at Ray. Um, it was really wonderful to watch people um, think through how to teach math, and it's such a different way than we've all grown up with, so that was really great to watch. Um, I enjoyed the holiday performances as well, and then also attended the Newport Heights Elementary uh, production of Annie. Um, I have two students who were in Annie, so that was <laughs> fun to watch. Oh. <laughs> um, so that was part of, I went to three shows and, uh, in 24 hours. Um, but it was really, really well You're done. And mom. so, That's but great. it was so fun to watch like all these kids who I'd never seen sing before and some of the shyest students that I've known K through six um, take on these lead roles that have these big voices. And it, it's, it's such a wonderful thing that all our schools do are these performances. They give kids another chance to, um, be part of a group that they maybe normally wouldn't. Um, and then um, for, I'm gonna do my legislative update. And then oh I just want- Oh my gosh, there's so much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, well we've talked about a lot of it, so I'm not gonna like reiterate a lot of that. But one thing I thought was really interesting is um, the way voting will take place and there will not be polling places and it's all gonna be mailed to uh, you. And starting in March. Yeah. I know. And so you will have That's only be able to vote by mail, or you could drop it in at a, at a like safe ballot. But it's, there's no more polling places. Yeah. Um, and then okay. lastly, I just I'm gonna beat the the dead horse, and I have a. <laughs> I hate to bring it up. Um, the the thing that we just voted on the resolution, we're not actually losing money, right? Because we're not investing anything. I just I did that math in my head, and I realized that. <coughs> We uh, no, we're not. You're, the, the action you took tonight was simply to establish a trust. The funding, the investment options, that's all will come back to you for direction, further direction on that. You just had given us direction a while ago to create the trust, right. and then we just need to come back to you on what those options, what the attributes of the trust will be. Okay. So then maybe we can figure out a I way. <laughs> Maybe we can figure out a way as we go through these resolutions to have kind of a, I don't know, like a, a process by which if we see something coming up that we just totally don't understand and there's not a lot of time that we can say like, hey, we need a meeting before. Because um, I'm not going to have questions on that, but I am going to have questions on like curriculum and mental health and things like that that I don't understand at all. Um, and then my last thing, <coughs> not in any order, sorry, it's very or disorganized. Um, I will be attending the chalk. Uh, conference on um, reducing and preventing youth suicide on February 7th and 8th. So I'm excited to bring information that I learned back to uh, the and district. I don't have a report because we've already had the reports. <laughs> You're welcome. No, but I, I do appreciate the hard work staff did and all the, uh, you know, workshops and, and committee meetings. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's where we live, actually. And so I really appreciate all the effort because I know there's a lot that goes into it. And I know that you guys are, you know, at first shaking your car, your paper and then all of a sudden you get in the groove and... And, and it's um, and just wonderful information. So I hate to have the board be intimidating. So, <laughs> but I have to tell, I, I, I've never considered myself intimidating, but you'd have to ask my five brothers that, you know, whether <laughs> I am or not. But, but I want you to know we are so genuinely, genuinely hungry for that information. And, um, and we are part of the team. And so it is really great sometimes to understand how you come and how staff and teachers, you know, support staff come to those conclusions. And, and we just love being able to hear it. So thank you for all the effort. It's wonderful. Appreciate it. 
Yeah, and, and I won't get on that too much more because we've talked about the math, but what was really interesting to me was when you gave a brief history of where we've been and where we all look at this mm -hmm. through coming up with a curriculum adoption of bridges, I'm talking about math now, in mm -hmm. K through five and what sixth grade did we all know decided not to participate to do, in that yeah. and to wait. There was six through eight and now they've implemented that. And the high school is now looking at what the lower grades have done so that they can be prepared to continue. So exactly. we will have from K to 12 a continuous progression that hopefully really works well. And it seems the teachers have are, are great with this. And I mean, to listen to elementary math teachers say they love teaching math now <laughs> is pretty yeah. incredible. I mean, that's it's great. Um, so that's super exciting. Um, and one thing Dr. D'Agostino said when he was talking to Waymakers made me think of something that happened at the CDMPTA meeting last week. Um, Officer Clemente gets up and speaks all the time. And he, he said, I don't have a lot to say today, I just want to talk about one thing. And it didn't have to do with vaping or anything, but he was talking about how middle school students tend to share their social media a lot and it can be real troublesome. And he gave an example, he gave some examples of a couple, a new couple in middle school and they are just, you know, super together and then the one of them will say, oh, give me your password for your, your social media. And then the next day or maybe two days later, they're not together anymore. And one of them posts on social media about the other one. And so his comment to that, which we all thought was very amusing, he said, tell your children, um, tell your children to share their hearts, not their passwords. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and it, it was a good line. <laughs> um, but anyhow, when they're, you know, when their middle school kids are looking for things to validate themselves, and, along with getting into all kinds of other issues. Uh, social media is a way that they do that. Um, do we have any more meeting updates? Or I, I just wanted to, um, I think these are students that have been sitting there. Are you students? Yes. Thank you. You stayed the whole meeting. You're taking Pretty notes impressive. or you're doing a crossword puzzle. But yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming and, and sticking it out. We're impressed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So thank you, everybody. Do I have a, oh, um, we are going to adjourn the meeting, the meeting oh, in, memory, yes. in memory of three people. Sue Lester, I mean, Nancy, Nancy Lester, Nancy Lester, Ardeth Benz, Benz Miller, Benz Miller, and Carmen, Benz Miller. Miller. And Carmen May. Mora. Mora. Carmen Mora. Um, so do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Good night, everyone, and, and thank drive you. Drive safe.